Peter, one of the things Todd talked about was the preparation leading up to the draft in terms of knowing who you'd go with under any scenarios. Did that play itself out tonight in terms of that practice and that preparation? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, we're down four, four picks, so it doesn't take a lot of rocket science to figure out who may be available at, at four. But what we started doing was at one point we started to look to move down. Um, and while that was happening, we got the sense that, that maybe Poole to Jarvey will drop. So we kind of backed off and, uh, um, you know, you just you kind of know what the other team's needs might be. And while there's some speculating, it happened that he was available. So we were fortunate. He's a big, strong kid, um, smart player, can shoot the puck, uh, happy to get him. When, did, when he did drop to four, was it a no-brainer at that point, or was there some deliberation? No, he was, he was, we were going off our list, and that's where we would have picked him, so we, 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 there was no hesitation, no. When he did drop to you at four, what, why was there no hesitation? What were his attributes that, that made it a no-brainer for you, and, and why you're had, happy to have him in the organization? Well, as I said, he's a big, strong kid. Um, I believe he was... The youngest MVP, I mean, his, his, his records this year were terrific. The youngest MVP of the World Junior. He may have the second most points in that tournament. Um, he, I mean, he had a terrific tournament. He was lights out. Uh, played at the men's level, was like, had a very, very strong season, had a very strong U18. I mean, we had him, we had him up in that, those upper echelon uh, for all year, so. Like you talked to uh, Yarmo before that, though, were you trying to move up to three to get him just in case? Well, we were we were just looking at jockeying around whether it was moving up or maybe moving down and, and seeing what you could maybe harvest from going down and, you know, so it maybe it's more common practice uh, where we were and how the players uh, laid out in, in their rankings. Um, but yes, we talked about maybe moving up and we talked about moving down also. You spent the... I think you'd spent several days talking about maybe moving this number four pick. I assume you end up unable to move it in a satisfactory deal. Uh, now that you got this kid, is it pretty happy about that? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, yeah, like we, you know, I've, I've said it's been difficult to to get a defense, and we put four in uh, a couple of scenarios that uh, we moved along uh, at the end. Uh, one became very real and, and it, it just didn't happen. Those, sometimes those things just don't happen. So, um, um, But at the same time, we were also looking to, uh, today at least, we were looking to move up and down. And that's when you got the sense that, hey, this kid may drop. So you're a little conservative at, at, with that approach, then he dropped. So if we were fortunate. How much, just, how much did you talk to Yarmo about maybe moving up to that spot? Well, we t I talked to Yarmo uh, probably uh, for the last week or two, and then we had more talks today. And I, but I talked to three or four other GMs that were below also. So, in terms of the search for a defenseman, how does it change um, once the draft is complete? Just the type of deals that might be there. Does it does it become more difficult, or is it you just resume? Well, really, there was like today. Really, there was only one deal that was involving the pick, so it doesn't really change it that much. Um, you know, you, you, you like what happens is you tend to, you, you know, you build momentum in these deals. and You think, like, let's get it done on draft day with the first day, and, and but you know, no, it's not essential that it gets done on draft day if it doesn't involve the pick, which is essentially what happened. Spent a lot of time talking to Chuck Fletcher too. Was that over a, a defense meeting? They have a few. Oh well, you know, you have a lot of conversations on the draft floor. I find it, I find it real productive to go, and that's why we get there early, and you can kind of button up some discussions and and uh, that was one of them. Do you feel any more confident after discussions today that you'll grab a defenseman before you leave here or less confident or where do you come home? Um, not like again as I said uh, really there's only one deal that involved the pick today so it, it's a good it'll be a good discussion day tomorrow if something moves along where it's to the point where we have to execute a deal we'll do it but we another player as opposed to well, as I said it doesn't that, like tomorrow's a good day where you can talk to these guys. Maybe it's a little less stressful on on player for player because you know, you're talking about the secondary picks now. So.
Pugliarvi is a right winger, and he comes into the organization as, as a player many people feel will play in the NHL next year. Does that change the complexion on your right side with any significance for some of the holdovers there? Well, he's you know if he if, if he's able to play, obviously uh, he's he could bump someone out. So it, it gives us I think one of you guys alluded to it earlier. It gives us a little more flexibility and in, in in our search for a defenseman. If, if if that's the case now, I I think he'll be ready to play. But uh, big strong kid to do what he did, and uh, I, that's how we project him. But you, you never know. Looking at the history of. A lot of Europeans talk about just that adjustment, not to the NHL, more so the ice surface. And it takes some time. He's got that option. That, like We see it with this year with uh, Ranson in Colorado. Would, would that be an option to have him come to North America and even try the, you know, the AHL for 30 games or something? It might be. You know, we, uh, we, we had, when, when I was in Boston, we did it with Pasternak, and it worked out pretty well. And so it, it might be. I, I really haven't thought that much about it. We talked about certain scenarios with him when we interviewed him. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that later. What do you think he does best? Well, I, I mean, he's, he, he's he, I like his big, strong stride. He protects the puck very well. Uh, he shoots in traffic, and he can make plays, too. Like, he, he's, not just, he's not just a pure playmaker. Maybe he's a little bit more of a playmaker than a shooter, but he's got a real good wrist shot. Uh, sees the ice well. He's a real versatile player. Like, you don't... You don't accomplish what he's accomplished uh, at the men's level and at the international level without being a you know a real good player he's obviously a real good player but he does all this stuff and he's a big strong body which i like do you find it works do you feel like good fortune of not even having to make a trade to get that guy you kind of fell into well body. you know like teams have different needs and and yeah, 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 you know, he, he slid one pick, and, and yeah, I feel a little fortunate because we had him high, but you know what? Other teams may have other guys higher. Um, you know, we, you know, we have an ex, you know, we got a lot of centermen, so to have, have a winger come, it's it's nice, you know, to be able to play with, play with our centermen, so uh, a little fortunate, but I mean, sometimes these guys drop. In terms of the timeline, Peter, like the best, the sweet spot for getting a deal, making trades when it's easier. Does July 1st play into it at all? Is it better to try and get things locked up before then? Like, where's that kind of zone for trying to make well, it? Well, it, it, it kind of goes ebbs and flows. Like, um, there's the shopping period now. will start tomorrow. So you get a sense of some free agents. Uh, there's some teams that uh, want to move before, as you alluded to, move before the market starts. So you just get, you know, you just continue your conversations. You, 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 you push along the deals. You see where maybe there's more urgency on the other side. and. If if that's the guy you want to get, you you, you push that one. It's just it's just I don't know. You just kind of grind along and, and wait to see what what, what kind of which ones develop and and you know you, we've got obviously got a list and it's ranked, but um, you got to you got to play it by a little sense and feel also. What is the scouting report on the mental makeup of uh, this kid yesterday? What do the scouts tell you? Uh, he's strong. He's a strong-minded kid. Uh, he's he comes from. Uh, uh, up north in his country, and uh, we took him out for dinner at the combines. He looks like he's a real pleasant kid. He's got to learn the language. Um, you know, you know, he shows leadership characteristics on the ice. Peter, you had the 32, and you got a, I think three right now in the third. Uh, were you and Bob talking? Was there? Were you close at all to possibly moving into the uh, late part of the first round? Uh, me and Bob. Green, like we talking. About oh, that. okay. Um, we we had a little discussion and there was maybe one instance when we might have tried to jump up um, from the second to the first, but uh, the player wasn't picked, so we decided to hold off. So uh, we may be he may be available tomorrow.